Hello and welcome to Big Deal. Of course, Budget 2017, the big event has happened. But how is it really going to impact the transactions and the mergers and acquisitions on the street? Who stands to gain? Who stands to lose? Let's thrash out the intricacies of what Budget 2017 has and for exactly that. I have two experts right now joining me in the studios. And let me welcome Girish Vanbari as well as Satish Kishan Chandani. Thanks, gentlemen, for joining us in CNBC TV 18. Now, my first question, a lot has been spoken, Girish, about the long-term capital gains tax. There's a lot of confusion about that, especially with the ones who have not paid STT. First of all, there is a relief. The relief is that there is no change in long-term capital gains tax. That was a fail. Okay. The intent of the government was to tax sham transactions. So there will be a lot of transactions on the stock market wherein people trade on stock markets, okay. convert their black money into white and not pay taxes. Okay. The government wanted to clamp this. So the government said, if you have not purchased shares from the stock market, mm. then when you sell, you will not get a tax break because you have to purchase and sell on the stock market. Mm. So let's say if I purchase from Satish mm. and sell it to you on the stock market two years down the line, mm. I can give him 100 rupees and sell it to you for 10,000 rupees. 9,900 is tax free. Mm. So they're saying I should purchase from Satish on the stock market and sell it to you on the stock market. Mm. But look at the confusion. Yes. Now what happens to ESOPs? ESOPs have not been purchased on the stock market. Yes. What happens to M&A transactions? Mm. They have not been purchased on the stock market. When right. a merger happens, you get shares. Negotiated deals. Negotiated mm. deals. And look at the other parts, private equity. Mm. They don't purchase on stock markets. Mm. Promoters, yes. you may form a company tomorrow. Yes. And then after its list, you may want to sell something. But you haven't purchased on the stock market. Right. Similarly, bonus shares, mm. right shares, split mm. shares, consolidated shares. Mm. So many different kinds of variants I can think about. Mm. Government has said that they want to come up with a clarification saying that genuine transactions will be exempted. But really, how will this clarification be comprehensive? Mm -hmm. What will it cover, not cover? Inheritance. So, I mean, uh, you know. No, so first, before we go to inheritance, Kirish, uh, let's first understand this because they've said that acquired on or after 1st October 2004. Oh. So the ones. Uh, before that are anyways exempt. Because there are two other exemptions. There. there are two other important yeah. exemptions also. The foreign investors uh, are also out and in situations where it couldn't have been done like IPO, FPO, uh, FPO. So can you give us more clarity on that and what is the mood point of contention there? So I mean before I get there, inheritance, let's say when a father dies, the son gets the shares, he doesn't get it on the stock market. Yes. yes. And then subsequently when he sells it, again it's God yes. knows what happens. Hmm. Now foreign institutional investors out because they will have a treaty benefit as you said mm. but how will the treaties play out after GAR comes in how will the treaties play out some have partial exemptions some have full exemptions so they are also watching this space mm. because otherwise they are two shelters 1038 and the treaty mm. treaty is looking uncertain at this point of time they have said these kind of transactions could be exempt. FPOs, IPOs, mm. and then you move on to mm. bonus and rights issues. But they said government will come up with a list. Mm. Now, the list should not only have these four or five categories. The list should have all these ten categories. Mm. And I don't know how many more. If we debate it even further, I'll have ten more things to add here. Yes, yes. So my point was as follows. GAR is anyway coming in the act. Mm. GAR anyway will cover these kind of sham transactions. Mm. Do you need to complicate 1038 mm. by saying everything is taxable other than these 8-9? Mm -hmm. Which can never be comprehensive. Because so, then so who is bothered uh, most right now? Who are the people who are calling you for advice right now that how, where do we stand? People calling most, employees are most bothered. Because we are ESOPs yeah. are getting completely into trouble. Other people who are bothered most are promoters. Mm. Genuine people who have acquired shares and restructurings, who have not bought the stock market. Mm. For private equity investors, because yes, the treaty is there, but if the guard is overriding the treaties, then what do they do? Mm. When they sell, they'll have to pay taxes. Mm. So the whole industry is bothered at large. There is a comfort though, that the government will come with a comprehensive list and hopefully things will be clarified. But till that happens, Hmm. This is the biggest thing in the budget, according to me, for m &As. So hopefully in a day or two, that clarification is also uh, expected. And also there is a problem, how do you articulate all this? It's very easy to say, okay, 10 categories are exempted hmm. or outside this. But you'll always find that will be short. Yes. Because you cannot visualize what or conceptualize that what issues will come up. Then each time in each exactly. category, there will be a transaction. Absolutely. You will have to go check and... 
probably figure out that there was some intricate detail which we missed absolutely. out and technically you are you fall under it or not no, because so, the so reason, there's uncertainty absolutely and the reason for it is only the SCT tag or is it the sham transaction that's valuation mm. if valuation is covered then it's only the STT mm. which the government is trying to ensure because right. the whole argument is that if there is no STT paid mm. then mm. there mm. should be long term yes but I don't think the real reason could be that the price at which the shares are transacted at are not fair market value for example, because whatever is done on the stock exchange yes. would have to be done as per the SEBI guidelines, yes. pricing guidelines. So yes, I think fair value and that notion is the if main driver exactly. for, for such a regulation to come in yeah, place. Right. But it will complicate uh, things. So foreign investors, so foreign private equity investors, the large ones who have made investments in India, they are out of this ambit. Uh, depends from where, uh, if they have invested directly from Mauritius or other uh, jurisdictions that would be but if they've invested from a local fund mm -hmm. which may be 99 percent investors would be foreign that may be treated as domestic fund okay so, so, so that, technically yeah, we'll have to see yeah, whether because they that's a registered India. category to or they all registered with sebi yeah. so so there is a fair amount of confusion on this and till this is sorted we may see foreign uh, private equity players also to right now wait and watch on this particular Correct. front before making Absolutely, yeah. any transactions that's that's clear right now so we'll watch out for those clarities but uh, satish on this one the reverse merger bit that we were chatting about how does this really impact the mergers uh, scenario? scenario and uh, reverse merger by way of which the stocks get listed of course there are big transactions happening idea vodafone is being talked about a lot so how does it impact that particular situation uh, reverse merger has always been uh, under sebi scan because is it a backdoor entry mm. because if you go to a normal ipo mm. the process is much more stringent the disclosures are far more mm. so it was always discouraged yes but sebi itself in january came out with a press run laying down the guidelines that if you comply with this you can do a reverse merger it's like a not a no no but we those are very stringent yeah. Max, yeah. but if you look at it none of them have actually been implemented as such in the recent past mm. so the vodafone uh, idea would be I mean, that's why if you read that, it's everywhere, whether it will get implemented. Hmm. You'll have to wait and watch. No, but HDFC Life and Max Life, that transaction has got most of the approvals. Now, the court processes. And yeah. there are two bits on that. I'll come to the non-compete later. But reverse merger and listing, backdoor listing, is that there is a large transaction that's happening there. Is that still a moot point for idea Vodafone as well? Yes. And especially with this uh, particular notification. No, it is. Budget. Because if you look okay. at it, uh, the swap ratio will be looked at carefully. What will be the shareholding of Vodafone in the yes. uh, entity, yes. etc. Whether public shareholding will drop, hmm. what will happen. So all those things will have to be looked at. But from the budgetary point of view, now that we are questioning the, the, the taxability of the probably the difference in the price that you paid while transfer off the market and on market, so that particular difference that is now taxable, will it make a big difference in these kind of cases where there is a backdoor entry? Because what you have done, the, the swap and the backdoor listing is in private space and then you make it to the market. Yeah, it will, they will have to take that into consideration. I mean, because the impact is just 10%. Yeah. So the question is that also at the time of sale. Hmm. So it's not necessary that would have, for example, hmm. the tax is not. Uh, yeah, when this they case. sell. Exactly. Is, yeah. Exactly. And not that they are looking at exempt. And uh, we'll have, have to wait for clarifications whether this will be also yeah. exempted or not. Okay. A genuine merger hmm. could be exempted. So what are uh, what is the industry saying? I'm sure we reached out to the government for giving more clarifications. Is there a wish list that please exempt these uh, these these situations? I think government is very clear on this that they want to make sure that genuine transactions mm -hmm. don't get caught in this.